Welcome to a tutorial on how to digitize a map using Safa software. This is normally very useful when you want to capture a few features uh, from a map or an area of study and therefore you need to maybe have a customized map that is able to reflect exactly what you'd want to do but this same map is a true link with what is in the reality or the real map itself. Now for this to be done you need Safa software as one principal tool and you also need scanned image of the map of the area of study then you need to be aware of the list of features that you need to capture uh, as you, you do your digitizing of this map. Now I have a simple instruction here that we you would want to follow. First of all I would want to tell you that once you have your software software and you have now opened a, a window you need to go to map, new, then base map. Immediately you get to this point the software software will uh, prompt you to uh, select an image which you had scanned of the, uh, the map area and go straight to where you had saved it so you at least you know its name and where it's located that will make work much easier and then something else which you need to know about the map is its coordinates uh, the exact uh, references at the edges that will help you do the georeferencing as I want to demonstrate so I go to Safa and this is Safa, I'm using Safa 10 and when you are in, the, in a new window such as this you go to map then new then base map and it quickly takes you to where you stored your image for the study area and mine is this so I would choose this and then open it and here it comes so when it's, when, uh, once I have it here you can quickly realize that uh, the values indicated are actually not the real values of the coordinates for the map or the location and therefore we need to reference this to correct uh, values so what you do click on the map itself and immediately you see uh, there is this property manager section where we have uh, the general and the information so we want to get to the general part and then down here you have spatial extents so at the spatial extents there is the left right top and bottom so we want us to feed those values depending on the information you have concerning your map so i will get to this first part and of course i know according to my values my top is 33 5 0, 0, 0. And I also know that my right is, don't worry if you see the map disappear, that's basically because we have changed the coordinates, so it's still figuring out how to display be the new coordinates. So we, I, my next value is actually 34, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then top, that is my Y maximum, my Y maximum will be 98, 79, 90, eight seven nine zero 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 and my minimum y is actually ninety eight seventy four zero 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 these units are in meters so basically we are operating in UTM so we want to click back the map and apparently there is nothing to be displayed that simply means we are not set the source coordinate system so this is what you are going to do click on the set and we are going to use a predefined so under predefined click there and of course you can choose to have geographic that is likely longitude or projected systems I want to use projected my values are in projected systems then of course what data we are talking about UTM yeah so UTM in Africa and Africa Act 90, uh, 1960 uh, UTM zone 37 South that's where this map belongs and you click OK and immediately you see the map is here with all the coordinate values as they are supposed to be so this is more interesting this is more useful so because we now have our map uh, set and we can now digitize what we have as the features 
So we move to the next stage. The next stage is to create an empty base layer on which we are going to draw our features. Maybe what I would advise to for order for of, uh, an ease of navigation, you need to create uh, empty base layers for each group of features, such as roads and their empty base layer, rivers and their empty base layers, maybe contours with their empty base layers, and maybe these names as well can be typed, but then you keep them in an uh, equally empty uh, base layer so that you would want to have easy control over them. Now, I want to proceed to show you how even these empty base layers are created. So you go back to the map option up there, and now you don't go to new, you go to add, because already you want it to work together with what we had already created. So you get to add, then you choose empty base layer, here we are, and it comes here. So once we are at empty base layer, right click on the base as indicated here, and then you choose enter group, which is here. So what's happening here on this map is basically now going to be uh, what is going to be captured for that empty base. So I want to draw roads. So I want to pick this main road first and then show how we, we go about the feature. So if I do that, then I would want to start with this corner here uh, so that uh, I have an option of drawing it. So if you get up here, you realize that we are able to type a text, we are able to draw a polygon, we are able to draw a polyline, we are able to do a symbol, we are able to draw a, a, a rectangle on, the, on this uh, surface, we are also able to do rounded rectangles, we can do ellipse, we can do uh, spline polylines, we can modify or reshape whatever we have drawn. So what I want to use for this road is basically uh, a, a spline polyline, let me pick that. And then you see there's a black uh, plus that has, my cursor has changed into a plus. And then you click at the point you want to start. And then as you move your cursor, you realize that you have a line with you. Yeah. So you can be clicking at any of the corners and that will change uh, the, 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 the point at which this line will make bends. So we get at that point, then you move to this corner, uh, make make this, the clicks as much as possible so that you can have somehow smooth curves or something like that, so that you don't uh, you don't end up having problems with your drawing. It should reflect uh, the reality uh, of the roads themselves, so that you don't just have drawings, but then a real reflection of what is here. And as you see me move, you can realize that at the bottom of this window, you realize that uh, the, the X and Y values keep changing. You can see the changes as the cursor moves. So that simply means that it's actually a reflection of the, the, the position, the exact position on the real map. So this is great. And uh, uh, we move on. If you're not able to see maybe a corner, you can still uh, use a mouse or your cursor. To, to magnify this. You scroll and then it magnifies or minimizes. So you're zooming out and zooming in. So you keep on doing that so that you see. And I know someone will be worried, oh, what do I do when my road ends, you know, my road ends, uh, or maybe I click wrongly. If you click wrongly, then you can uh, decide to uh, modify it by maybe clicking back the space or right clicking, you know, if you right click, you 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 actually remove that point. You see, if I right click, uh, I'm removing the previous click that I had made. So you do that, and you see I'm moving backwards. So uh, that is that's that's another trick another trick in handling this. So you can move on and move on and on and on, and then when we are getting at this point, my road still continues. But naturally, the map will move so that uh, I'm able to get the space as long as my cursor is at the end of the window. I can see I have clicked wrongly there. So I just right click and then it removes. Then I get back to it yeah, and continue with what I was doing. Uh, how did I detect that I did it wrongly? Because when I'm making a bend, it swells instead of tracing the line. So I right click again and then it's back there. So let me move the click there and then immediately another one that handles that problem. So we come to that point, that point, that point. Uh, the map is still on, so it's moving by itself. 
so you, you don't need to struggle to scroll it's moving actually so you see i still have my features here you know i still have my features so i'm doing it the way it's supposed to be done and then my roots end there if it ends there double click and then you're done with the line you can decide to proceed because we can see our cursor is still a plus we proceed to the next road but for now maybe i would want to just uh maybe uh, uh try to modify the features i have here so what i when i do that i would uh, uh I would get to the road itself and then try to modify the road so you come to the base yeah and then you see i have drawn a spline polyline there when you click on it like that you see its properties come here so i can change yeah the nature of the line maybe to dashed then i even change the color from blue black to maybe blue and i can also change the thicknesses so you see it's becoming thicker so maybe i can come and then back to continuous line and maybe reduce the thickness and so on and so on so you see how we modify the features we have drawn so that it fits uh, it becomes as, as similar to the real one as possible sometimes if you have arrows you can draw them and then you you do end styles because if you do an end style you can uh, do a start then you see simple head a field head yeah you see triangle head and so on and so forth i would not want to do that because it's just but a symbol representing a road so maybe depending on what you're drawing you can opt to have this so i would keep it none I'll keep this one also none then something which i would want to do on this is just to maybe name what i have just drawn instead of just keeping it as spline, uh, spline line polyline then i would have to rename it so that i don't confuse with the next one that i will draw so maybe i call it main uh, main road yeah which is if i click that maybe it, it gets back there so if you want to rename you right click and then you can select the name just as i said you rename the object and then you do the renaming so that's basically that and maybe if you want to see whether uh, you you can keep away the, the the image this image which you imported and then you see your road is there okay or you bring it back as you continue moving on with your stuff so you can do as many as possible uh, then at the end of the roads themselves or drawing the roads you can come back to the base here uh, the base that you have created and then you exit group once you do that you're back to a general or, or whatever we called the, the base map and uh, i expect you to do more of this until you get something similar to this which had been drawn earlier so you can see how we have this nicely drawn with rivers from the same map the rivers are indicated the main road is here other roads are here names indicated and so on and so forth so this is basically trying to uh, to tell us that we can have our drawing our map digitized with the features that we want to show sorry with the features that we want to show uh, without having any problems to what we we wanted to achieve with our drawing and then something interesting at the end of your drawing you can check or uncheck anything and then it's not shown you know you can check or uncheck uh, features from the object manager and uh, like we have some points here if i don't want to see them i can decide to uncheck that and you see the points are disappearing and if you check it comes back the points come back and if i want to maybe uncheck uh, some some kind of uh, uh, the roads themselves i just remove the roads by unchecking the parts which are named roads and then i can check it back from the object manager and they come so if what i want to print out was just to show reverse then you see i have rivers alone and the names and the coordinates and i have my digitized map here and if i would want to maybe uh, bring back the roads yes together with the rivers and so on and so forth there is this possibility of again also importing another map so that you are able to uh, also show various information concerning the map that you have just digitized 
For example, in this map there would be maybe a plot of of of, of some kind of information. You just check it and then you bring it. You can import it here and then draw. Then you have what you have. So you see, it, it, this can be a reflection. You can even decide to control the opacity so that the information you have drawn, the rivers, can be a reflect, can be overlaid together with the other information from another plot. And you have your maps here, and you have your information captured, and you have your research done well. So basically, doing this is not that difficult. If you have any challenges with this, then you can contact me uh, through the, the chats uh, or the, uh, below the, the video or for those who have access to my contacts can easily get me so that we explain more out of this so that we can have our life easier as we're dealing with things related to uh, geosciences and such stuff. I think this helped and if you're happy about this you can always help other people uh, as we move on with our study of geosciences. Thank you.